I'm going to show you how to build a handheld rig for your Panasonic Lumix S5 and turn it into a cinema camera beast. We're going to be looking at all the components in detail but we've got a cage, a side handle, a top handle, follow focus wheel, monitor mount and even a mat box as well. So it's got everything that you need. The only thing I've not got at the moment is a base plate and some rails but I'm going to be adding that in a later video. Small Rig did kindly send me some of the components for this build, but they have not sponsored this video. And I've been a big fan of Small Rig for a long time anyway. But what they have done is they've very kindly supplied you with some offers. So all of the components are listed below and there's a discount code as well. So if you're looking at building one of these rigs, it's definitely worth checking out the discount codes and the links in the description. So a lot of people build handheld rigs now. They're becoming more and more popular but I'm seeing a lot of people do it wrong. It's all about weight distribution. You want to get the weight distribution right so you can hold it steady. Adding any sort of weight to your camera setup will make your shot smoother, but you've got to make sure you do it in the right way. And there's a reason why I've chosen each of these components specifically to help with that weight distribution. Because if you do get the weight wrong, you're not going to be able to hold it properly and you'll be focusing on balancing the camera more than actually getting the shots. So if you see, here, when I hold this with the top handle, it's perfectly level. The camera is pointing straight forward, it's not drooping down, it's not leaning to one side or the other, it's perfectly central. And that just means I can focus more on the framing and the composition of the shots themselves, rather than steadying the camera. Lastly, before we get started, the parts in this video are the ones that I've chosen and that work best for me, but this video is all about giving you some ideas. You can do it however you like. If you prefer having the handle on the right hand side, go for it. If you like having the wheel underneath instead of on top, go for it. I just want this video to inspire you and give you some ideas for a handheld rig for your camera. So let's get into it. So here we are, we've got the Lumix S5 on its own, no camera cage, lovely little camera actually, I, I love picking it up and using it because of the size of the thing, but when you've got the cage and everything on it just feels so much more professional and it increases the usability of it basically and I love having a monitor mounted on the top. The most crucial part of this whole build is the cage itself. That's what we're gonna mount everything to. What I love about these small rig cages is, well, loads of things really, but how well made they are, and they're just like fit flush to the camera as well. So even when you're holding the camera with just the cage on, it still feels comfortable. It doesn't feel cumbersome. It comes with this little tool which is magnetized to the underside of the cage, and I love that because it just means that you don't have to carry an extra thing with tools in. It's just in there, built in, get it out, pop it back on, and those magnets are nice and strong and they'll keep it safe. So you pop your camera in. Now what I've noticed on some cages is that the camera can actually swivel and that's not good because obviously you don't want your camera to be moving around in the cage. What they've cleverly done is they've got this little pin here that goes through that clasp for your camera strap. That means it's just not going to wiggle around and move around in the cage. It's just really sturdy. There, no movement whatsoever even if you're not quite tight enough. There we go, that's the first bit. You've got a NATO rail on the side of this cage, you've also got a cold shoe mount on the right hand side if you want to put a microphone there or a light or something like that. Plenty of mounting options underneath, all over the sides on the top and we've got an ARRI mount on the top as well for a monitor or something like that. But we're going to put a top handle on and that's the next thing. Before we put the handle on, I've actually got this NATO plate that came with the mini follow focus, which I'll talk about in a bit. The reason why I'm using this is, well, for two reasons really, for the follow focus, but also the handle that I'm using has got a NATO mount. But I've put links in the description to similar handles that have different mounting options, so if you want to choose those, that's fine. But bear with me because there's a reason why I love this handle. So we're going to mount the NATO clip to the top of the cage to begin with. Nice and easy to do with the included Allen key of the top handle. And that can be moved to wherever you want, so nice and flexible. So once that's on there, we can put our top handle on. Now, as you'll see, you can slide that about. And this is why I like this handle. I like the NATO row handle because you've got more flexibility of where you can put it. For example, if it's over to the left, and you've got no option of moving that, then look what happens. When you hold the camera naturally, it's drooping to the right hand side. So we want to get the center of gravity right in the middle. We want to get that perfectly so we can move that across 
and then once it's in the right place we can tighten it where it is there love that feature so here we are look I'm holding it now and it's perfectly level don't even need a spirit bubble another good thing about this handle is the fact that it comes with this allen key that magnetizes in the top love it so I'm never searching for my allen key I always know it's there but you can also move this bit forward and backwards so again to get the center of gravity in the right place. So as I hold this camera, I know it's in the exact right place. And when I start adding other accessories, I can move that about if I need to. Another reason why I like this handle is because we've got the ARRI mount on the front. Now a lot of people tend to use these monitor mounts, the standard ones, and put them on top. But what happens then is your monitor is all the way up here then. That's not the best place to put a monitor because of the weight distribution. You've got too much on the top there. If we use this ARRI style monitor mount that I've got, we can put that on the front. Now I can't show you because I'm using the monitor at the moment. In fact, I will show you, I'll show you. When we put the monitor on now, that's in a much better position. So we can angle that as well. Look at that. So we can have it upright if we're filming low down and we need to see it, or we can have it facing us a little bit more. So that's a much better way of mounting your monitor rather than having it up here. So this is why I love this handle and that monitor mount. This is the one I've gone for. Again, there's plenty of options. I like this one because it's got plenty of flexibility. It's, it stays out of the way of your HDMI ports on the left-hand side. And you can also move this up and down wherever you like. You can switch sides so you can have it on the left or the right. It's got the built-in magnetized Allen key thing, mounts on the top. It's also got a cold shoe as well and it's just super comfortable and this wooden design looks cool and because these thumb screws have little holes in them you can actually tighten them up using the allen key so you just pop that in there and make sure they're nice and secure so that's not going anywhere that is starting to come together now we've got a nice even if you just wanted that with a monitor on you've got a nice balanced rig there we've got a grip on the right hand side and a grip on the left hand side we've also got a handle on the top if you're an auto-focused person, you might want to skip this step, but if you are a manual-focused person, I highly recommend the mini follow focus. It's a great bit of kit because normally when you're focusing with your lens, you're going left and right. That's not what's happening when you're focusing. You're focusing forward and backwards. So having this wheel means you can actually turn it forward and backwards and it just feels more accurate, really, while you're focusing. You can mount this underneath or above left and right however you want this is how i've done it but that basically just mounts straight in there so there we are the follow focus is on and attached we're good to go the last thing then again completely optional the mini map box i love the mini map box because it's super lightweight you don't have to have the rails on to use this it just attaches straight to your lens it's hardly any weight so it's not going to pull on your lens mount and it's a good size for these small cameras if you used one of the traditional map boxes it would just look ridiculous on this tiny little thing so i think they've done a great job with this i've got a full video on that and you can see that up here if you want to check that out really easy to install you just get the included thread adapter put it on your lens and they come in all different sizes by the way and then all you have to do is pop this map box over the top like so get it level and then tighten it up and that is it you are away so just like that we've gone from a tiny little like photo type camera to almost like a pretty much full-blown cinema rig look at that how much more professional does that look I know it's not all about that, but, and that's kind of what I want to talk about, really. I heard someone mention the other day, what makes a cinema camera a cinema camera? Because all of the cameras are so good these days, you pretty much can't go wrong. It's just, it just comes down to the features that you need for the types of shoots that you do. But really, it comes down to how you build it out and how you use it. For example, I've got a, a focus wheel on here. Now, because I've rigged this out with a cage, I could add a wireless focus system to this, and that means somebody else can control the focus while I'm using the camera. So, effectively, any camera 
can become a cinema camera depending on how you rig it out. It's just how you use it. Because I've got the matte box on here, I can use cinema quality or at least professional type filters instead of the screw on ones. I can use the screw on ones with this matte box as well, which is another great feature of this matte box. But again, I've just got, there's just so many things that you can do with a custom built handheld rig that you can't with just the camera itself. Now I've also included links below for these cables that I use. Love these cables because they're super thin, super flexible and they're a good length. You haven't got too much cable that you've got to wrap around and, and think about cable management with. So these are great. I highly recommend these. <laughs> Look at that! When I see this it just makes me want to go out and film even more because just because it looks so cool to be honest. Let me know what you think. Are you a handheld user? Do you like having a cage? Do you like it without the cage? Do you use gimbals or steady cams? Do you do a bit of both? Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your comments. I've got loads of videos coming on the S5. I can't wait to test it out properly. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great week and I'll see you in the next one.